Our next speaker is Dr. Thomas Lloyd. Uh, he's assistant professor of neurology and neuroscience at Johns Hopkins. He received his MD degree at Baylor, his PhD at Baylor, intern and residency at Johns Hopkins. Then he's a research and clinical fellow in neuroscience and neuromuscular diseases at Johns Hopkins. He's a co-director of the Charcot Marie Tooth Disease Clinic and co-director of the Johns Hopkins Myositis Center. And he's going to speak this morning about include or this afternoon, I'm sorry, inclusion body myositis. All right, thank you very much for that uh, invitation. It's uh, really it's really a pleasure to be here. Uh, Although I'm a neurologist, I uh, work very closely with uh, rheumatologists at the uh, Johns Hopkins Myositis Center, uh, including, including Lisa Christopher, whom uh, many of you probably know. So uh, my only disclosure is that I'm, I'm the uh, site PI for an upcoming uh, Novartis trial in IBM that I'm going to uh, be telling you guys about. And really my uh, uh, objectives this afternoon are to um, really, really give you an update on uh, uh, IBM uh, research and uh, treatment. And uh, despite a lot of work, the uh, underlying cause of inclusion body myositis is uh, really completely uh, unknown. So um, if you're uh, expecting a, uh, an answer of what causes IBM today, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be disappointed. Um, now, uh, even though, as you know, um, immunosuppressive medications in general are not uh, effective in this disease, they're uh, Really, really is a lot that we have to uh, offer patients. So, so we see a lot of patients that are uh, are diagnosed with inclusion body myositis, and uh, their uh, physician simply says there's nothing uh, we can do, and and get your affairs in order. You're going to be in a wheelchair in five to ten years. So, uh, really, really, uh, what I want to leave you with uh, this afternoon is that uh, actually there's a lot more that uh, we can do for patients. Okay, so just as a quick introduction, um, I'm sure all of you uh, know that uh, inflammatory myopathies are uh, classically divided into uh, dermatomyositis uh, and polymyositis, which have uh, proximal uh, muscle uh, involvement as well as involvement of of the lung and other tissues, and uh, inclusion body. Oh, sorry. And uh, inclusion body myositis, which involves both proximal and distal uh, muscle weakness. And unlike DM and PM, there is, uh, is really no lung involvement and no uh, increased association with malignancies. Uh, another very important distinction is that whereas DM and PM are, are typically uh, responsive to immunomodulatory therapies, uh, inclusion body uh, myositis is, uh, is typically refractory. Another important distinction is that in, uh, in IBM, um, unlike PM and DM, it is uh, it's typically a disease of, of older males. So uh, the uh, age of onset is usually over 50, uh, with a median uh, age of onset of 60. And um, depending on what study uh, you read, there is a, a, a between 2 to 1 and, and 3 to 1 uh, increased male to female uh, ratio. So even though it's, it's considered a, a rare disease, the uh, incidence is still about uh, one in one in a hundred thousand, making it the most common uh, muscle disease in uh, adults over the age of fifty. So the uh, clinical characteristics of IBM are um, one of a very slowly progressive uh, muscle weakness and atrophy, and the uh, classic pattern of involvement is 